Hello everyone, this is AJ and welcome back to day nine of my 12 days of Christmas. Yes, so today I'm going to be talking about the 1946 classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've just sat down and watched It's a Wonderful Life. Um, 4K version. Now, I've never seen this film before. Um, I bought it because I planned on doing this this um, this sort of series, this review series. Um, it's a film I'd wanted to watch. Um, I picked it up in a sale, two for twenty quid on 4Ks, with this and Universal Soldier. Um, so it's a wonderful life. This film came out in 1946, um, stars James Stewart and Donna Reed, um, directed and written by Frank Capra. Now, as I'd said, a um, film I'd never seen, so um, I wanted to see what all the fuss was about it because, you know, it's, it's, it's billed as being like the best Christmas film ever, this sort of a thing. So... I thought I'd sit down, watch it, give you my thoughts. It'll be an interesting one because of the age of the film um, and all the hype that, that, that sort of surrounds it. The hype that, you know, the, the sort of um, the tenure that the film has had and, and what people say about it. So, thusly, I sat down, I watched it. Um, now, the film runs at uh, two hours and ten minutes. Um, film follows um, this this character named George Bailey obviously played by James Stewart and it's basically his life um, the film starts off with a snowy scene and you get like a shot of, of up in space and this dodgy floaty moon goes by and and then you get but you, basically you get this scene with like angels talking this sort of thing uh, and you 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 you're told that um, this George Bailey, he's sort of hit rock bottom and he's going to commit suicide. So they send this angel down, a second tier angel who hasn't got his wings yet. Um, they're going to send him down to, um, to to help save him, so to speak. And so they start showing his life. So you see his life from a child growing up um, into adulthood and this sort of a thing. Now the film actually spends one hour, about one hour and 40, one hour and 45 minutes of that run time on his life and the townsfolk that he's with. Um, he works in sort of like a building and loans place or he ends up working in a building and loans place that his father had worked in. Um, there's troubles with the, you know, with money and this sort of thing. And, and it, 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 he gets a wife, you know, obviously, on and read um they have children blah 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 house all that and as these troubles occur with the bank and the money and, and this money sort of gets misplaced and lost um his life sort of starts hitting rock bottom um to the point where he he considers suicide which is the point at which the angel appears and you see the angel fall into a river um snowy river it's christmas time he actually dives in after the angel but it's the other way around the angel's like well actually i came in to save you this sort of a thing uh, and and he turns around and says you know I, I wish i'd never been born or you know and and thusly the angel shows him what life would have been like um in the town without him being in it and and how people differ and, and the, the paths different paths that people have taken down now this is like from the one hour 40 one hour 45 minute mark to the 210 mark so that latter um that that that, that, that a third of the film that latter um section of the film deals with this um i'll be honest um brutally honest I, the whole first lot of the film leading up to this i, I was pretty bored um I, I had to question what it had to do with christmas um because all, all that section being his life had nothing to do with christmas other than a bit of snow at the beginning and the last 20 minutes 25 minutes being set at christmas and christmas eve the whole rest of the film is is nothing to do with christmas itself um 
the end is where that all happens. Um, now, I will say that the the end of the film, this part of the film segment, um, was really good, really interesting. It sort of delved into something a bit different than the rest of the film did. It, it kind of feels um, sort of disjointed in a sense compared to the whole rest when this occurs. Um, I can see the influence that this film has had on other other films now um i can see the you know there, there's a sort of back to the future 2 element to it um in the you know the marty mcfly stuff when he goes back into the past and everything's changed um there's that sort of element to to this that you know i can see that they've sort of drawn from this um there's certainly an element of this drawn from Charles Dickens' Scrooge in that you've got the ghost of Christmas future and this sort of thing. The angel kind of acts as that sort of a, 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 a story trope in that you see the differences in his life that makes him turn his life or, or makes him realise that his life actually is pretty damn good. And yeah, do you know what I mean? This sort of a thing. Um, also, little nods to, you know, um, A Christmas Vacation with the... The banister being broken. Um, do you know what I mean? I, I just thought of things like that. That you know, you got the Christmas vacation with the banister where he chainsaws it off. Um, and in this film, there's a broken banister. I'm sure it's got to be a nod to this film that that scene in that. Um, so yeah. So um, is it the best Christmas film ever? No, no, it's not. Um, I've got to wonder if I would get more out of it on a second viewing, knowing what happens at the end um, and now seeing the whole beginning in his life in a different light and maybe taking more interest in what occurs there, um, knowing where the end is going and, and, and what actually occurs at the end. Um, so on a repeat viewing, it might go up a notch. Um, I'm not saying it's not a bad film. It's a good film. Um, you know, it... it the, the first maybe half drags a bit, but then it sort of speeds up a bit with stuff happening. Um, but for me, certainly not the best Christmas film ever ever, ever made. Um, obviously, I wasn't there in 1946 when this film came out, and I haven't been there subsequent years later until maybe the mid-70s, and I wouldn't have ever watched it then. It's a black and white film. Um, but... Lastly, it, it's, it, it was enjoyable enough. Um, I will give it a rewatch, but I wouldn't have it on my yearly Christmas list. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't say it was that good. Um, but that's primarily because it's not a film that I've grown up with, and this sort of era of film isn't something that I. It's something that I rarely go back and revisit and, and look at um, because I didn't grow up during this era of film. It, it's not really the type of films the era of films that hold too much interest with me so so thusly you know um it, it was a it was a, a a pleasant enough film um the end is far superior to the rest of it um in a twilight zoney type of do you know what i mean this sort of a, a, a way to it a bit of sort of a sci-fi type of element i suppose but the rest of it is just a substandard sort of um is a geezer's life but obviously when you take the whole thing into context you might get more out of the beginning when you see the end and, and more might make sense but anyway so there's my thoughts on it um i'll be happy to re-watch it maybe in two three years time at christmas but certainly not every year anyway this is aj thank you for watching and i'll see you tomorrow on my next um 12 days of christmas um and we're getting towards the end of it um only maybe three more after that yeah three more after this video um but anyway this is aj see you later all take care and goodbye